uh, inshallah, we will be able to share with you some thoughts under the general heading of the talk on never giving up. Never giving up based on the idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not burdened any of us beyond our capacity. As Allah said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not burden any soul beyond its ability. So it means there is no excuse for giving up. If what you're doing is good, of course, is what we're talking about. Uh, if we're talking about bad, evil, etc., then give it up. We should give up. But we're not talking about that side. We're talking about the good side. Where we have made the intention to do something good, we should try our best, our utmost, to stick with it. To stay with that good. Because ultimately, the benefit, the reward, is for sticking with it. It's not for just doing it on an occasion. Of course, we not say there's no reward for doing something good on an occasion. But the real reward lies in continuous good. Where we are steadily maintaining that good based on the general hadith which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, uh, shared with us as recorded in both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim where the Prophet وسلم, was quoted as saying أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ that the most beloved Deeds to Allah are those that are continuous, even if they are of a small nature, a small level, even though they are not huge deeds. If they are good deeds and they are consistently done, then this is far greater in reward than to do a huge deed and then stop. The doing of something really good for only a short period of time and then giving it up, this is something that the Prophet ﷺ advised against. In one narration from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, May Allah's peace and blessings be up, or may Allah be pleased with both of them. He quoted the Prophet ﷺ, Abdullah ibn Amr, quoted the Prophet ﷺ as saying, Ya Abdullah, O Abdullah, لا تكن مثل فلان فلان كان يقوم الليل فترك قيام الليل. Don't be like so and so, who used to stay up at night in prayer and then he abandoned it he used to get up at night for prayer and then he gave it up so the fact that the Prophet وسلم, advised Abdullah ibn Amr not to be like that shows us that this is not a good practice in Islam consistency is what is really needed. And that's why, you know, if we're off, if we're off the track, we're off the path, we're struggling to get back on the path, the best way is to start with our basics and to build on those basics step by step. As opposed to trying to do everything all at once, or even somebody comes newly into Islam, they want to do everything that is required of a Muslim, every last thing that can possibly be done, it will overwhelm you. It is better to start gradually, 
I mean, there are basic things which we all need to do. We establish those and then we build step by step. In this way, we are able to be consistent. Otherwise, we are just like the match. You light the match, it flares up and then psh, it goes out. It only burns for a minute and then it is gone. So, when we come, because this talk on never giving up is within the context of seeking knowledge, setting out on the path to gain knowledge, knowing that the act of seeking knowledge itself is ibadah. And ibadah, when we do it, we need to be consistent with it. So when we set out on this path, we don't want to give up, we don't want to drop off, we don't want to stop. We want to stay on that path. Because it is a path which is blessed. It is a sacred path. It is the path which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, based on instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us is a path to paradise. It is a path among the paths to paradise, seeking knowledge. And that's why he made it compulsory on every Muslim. Because it will carry us to paradise if we are sincere in seeking that knowledge. So, in this context, having set out, having joined the Islamic Online University, and of course, those of you that are watching, who have not joined the university. You come to the IOU page or my various pages uh, on Facebook and you heard about this or through Twitter or the blog or whatever and you're sitting in for this talk. That's good. Welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. We welcome you. But if you're really serious, then you need to engage yourself in structured study. Because you can sit with this lecture of mine. You can go on YouTube and watch a hundred more lectures from here and from there talking about various topics, etc. And after a year, if we ask you, could you teach a class on Tawheed, on Fiqh, on Hadith, on Tafsir? You're going to say, no, I can't. I mean, I heard the lectures, I liked them, I enjoyed them. And if I hear the lecture again, I'll remember, but I can't teach it. Well, that means you really haven't learned it. Because if you've learned it, if you have really absorbed it, then you should be able to give it up. And that's what we are encouraged in the whole process of gaining knowledge. We're encouraged to give up that knowledge. The zakah, the zakah of knowledge is teaching it. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ had said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. Not just those who learn the Qur'an, not just those who learn fiqh. Yes, it is a blessing to have sought the knowledge and to have gained it and to have understood it but the, the ultimate blessing comes in applying it in our own lives and teaching it to others so in this context of seeking knowledge remembering that once you set out on this path your enemy your avowed enemy satan will be striving to block your way to put hurdles, to discourage you, to weaken you, to cause you to fall from the path. So, in spite of the opportunity which is presented by the Islamic Online University for you to gain knowledge, we still have about 30% of our students every semester dropping out. I mean, those who actually end up enrolling 
from those who first come and registering is like a tenth. One tenth. People came on with the intention, let me register and do this course. They went registered and so on and so, but then to go get their certificates, to upload it, to uh, you know certify their certificates, even though we've made certain concessions for them, they don't have to certify right away, you know. Um, and and uh, just the the functionalities of the uh, online study and program, you know, becomes daunting for some people. They end up dropping out before they even get started. So this is Satan. Satan has won. He has won. Only 10% of those who register actually enroll and start classes. And then from that 10%, 30% drop out. Actually, our dropout rate is not bad in comparison to many other universities. I've spoken to other heads of you know, online studies and they say, you know, we have an average about 50%, maybe more, 60%. So 30% is excellent. But we would like to see zero or only 1%. That's what we would like to see. People coming in committed and hanging in there, not giving up. Why? Because it is for your benefit. The fees that we're charging are so small, obviously, we're not going to become millionaires from this. It's not about money. It's about spreading the knowledge. Getting authentic Islamic knowledge on your laptop, on your PC screen, in your hands. So, you have to commit. You have to commit yourself to holding on firmly and sticking to it. And when we listen to the Prophet ﷺ talking about the good things, the important things, he always says, hang on there. Stick to it. Cling to it. Even Allah SWT tells us in the Quran, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on firmly to the rope of Allah. That's the Quran and the Sunnah. All of you, together, hold on firmly to that rope. Don't let it go. And the Prophet ﷺ further elaborated on that saying, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنْ I've left with you two things. إِن تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا If you hold on firmly to them, لَن تَضِلُّ أَبَدًا You will never go astray. If you hold on firmly to them, you will never go astray. So this idea of clinging, holding on firmly to what is true, what is known to be true, what is righteous, what is good, this we have to train ourselves to do. And that's why we are encouraged you know, to, to set patterns for ourselves in our day-to-day -day lives, to start things. That we, can be, that we can try to hang on to and to check ourselves when we fall and come back, you know, to train ourselves to hold on firmly. This requires a positive view. We have to be among those who look at the glass as being half full. Yes, you can look at that glass as being half empty. But the way we need to approach it is half full. We see the glass half full. That means we're looking at the positive side. There are neg negativities out there. There's no end of negativities out there. But there are as many, if not more, positive things that we can hold on firmly to. So, with that positive outlook, we should realize that as long as we're still alive, we have a choice, we have a chance to do good. We have a chance to get back on that path. We have a chance to redo whatever we failed to do. Some people get discouraged because of exams. They didn't do well or as well as they 
thought they should or they hoped they should. But this is a learning process. Know that most people who start something for the first time, they are not perfect at it. They don't become perfect. This is the very first time you're doing it. The likelihood of you being perfect in it is very small. Only a fraction, a very small fraction of people start things for the first time and perfect it. Right from the very first time. Most people, you get some of it. And then you try again, you get more of it. You try again, you get the most of it. That's how it is for most people. So we have to be realistic. Don't be disappointed because we didn't achieve what we thought we should achieve. Don't be disappointed. Many of you are starting to study again after having left studies years back. You haven't been in a classroom. You thought online study was, you know, something relatively easy. It's online. You can do whenever you feel like doing it. You know, it's, it's so much flexibility there. It should be easy. But no, it's not. It's just as hard as being in the classroom at fixed times. Because it even becomes harder. Because you're not forced to be there on fixed times. So you have to discipline yourself to be there. So it means it's harder. In the other case, the classes are at this time. If you miss that class, you missed it. So you have to be there. So there's pressure on you. People are going to classrooms. They're pressurized to be there for that lecture. But now you don't have to. You can turn it on, turn, get into your computer, access it whenever you like. So now what's going to make you do it today and not put it off until tomorrow? Or tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and putting it off for the day after that. What's going to stop you from doing that? Because it's easy enough to do it. Oh, I'll do it on the weekend. And then all your classes pile up that weekend. Oh, I can't do all of this. So I'll do some. But now you've, you have a pile of classes that you didn't do. And you go into the next week. Oh, I'll do it the next weekend. Now you have the pile from that new week plus half of the pile from the previous week. Oh, I can only do half of that. So then... You go into the next week. You can see what's happening here. Eventually, you're going to be so overwhelmed. Exam time rolls up. And all of these bits and pieces of classes have piled up that you didn't complete. And you say, how can I do it? I can't do it. It's too much. When it was so easy from the beginning to be consistent, this is how we're going to be able to do it. If we do it steadily, taking a small amount each day or every other day, we just set a pattern. The key is that we have to have a system. As our sister explained, in, for those people who are attending uh, our session online for the new students, you know, she explained that you have to plan. You know, as they say, in the world of business administration, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you must have a plan. You must organize your time. You must fit your study time in a particular place in your schedule. If you don't do it that way, then you're likely to drop out. You're likely to become inconsistent. So you need to Organize yourself so that you'll be able to hold on firmly to your commitment to learn this deen. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, to gain the necessary knowledge primarily for ourselves, to know the religion. Because how do we attain good deeds? How do we achieve success in doing the right thing. We have to have knowledge of what that success is. We have to have knowledge of what really the right thing is. If we don't have that knowledge, then we'll be engaged in things which are not the right things. And we will not achieve success, though we might have put a lot of energy and time into it. So it is important that we have this knowledge 
And it is something that we made the intention for, we dreamt about, we wished for, we wished we had this knowledge, and it is achievable. Because Allah has not burdened any soul beyond its capacity. And the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, had made this compulsory. He would not have made it compulsory if it were not doable. So the fact that it is compulsory means we all can do it. And you know, of course, each and every one of us, we have people who are looking at us, watching us. If we fail, they say, ah, this is something, nobody can do this, it's too much. So our failure becomes their failure, as our success will become their success. We are, having chosen the path of knowledge, we are examples. Even if we say we don't want to be, I don't want to be an example, don't take me as an example. People will take you as an example. If you have taken that step, committed yourself to study, then people will be watching you. And their future may depend on your ability to hang in there and to do the right thing. So, we have to recognize that if we have been chosen among the many who were called, when the Prophet said, seeking knowledge is compulsory for every Muslim, he called the Ummah. But of those who actually responded to that call, there are few. Those few are chosen by Allah. Allah has chosen you, put you in this position to gain knowledge. It is a blessed position and it can be a curse at the same time. It can be a curse if we seek this knowledge for the wrong reason. We seek it to be famous, we seek it just to make money, we seek it because it represents power, so we can have power over others. These are the wrong reasons and they will destroy us in the end. So that's the negative side that we have to be cautious of, we have to be conscious of. But at the same time, the positive side is, it's the path to paradise. It is a way of worshipping Allah, the path to paradise. So. We have this commitment that we need to make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say that our religion, our deen is for Allah. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah said that we are only commanded to make this religion sincere for Him. That we are doing it truly for the pleasure of Allah. Because in the pleasure of Allah, we succeed. If Allah is pleased with us, it means we're doing the right thing. And those right things that we do benefit us ultimately. And that's why we should seek to do it. Because of course the concept of doing things to please Allah, when we, as human beings we like to do things to please ourselves, but no ultimately. When we please Allah, we will please ourselves. We will be pleased. Because if Allah is pleased with us, then we will attain what is ultimately pleasurable. And that is paradise. It may have difficulties on the way, but ultimately, the ultimate pleasure of paradise will be ours. In pleasing Allah, we do so in order to attain what he created us for. He created us for paradise. That's why Adam was in paradise. That's where we belong. But due to our own failings, due to our own inconsistencies, our negativities, Satan busy pulling the rug from under us, tripping us, putting potholes so we'll stumble, 
fall in, hurt ourselves. With all this struggle that is there, we end up falling off the path. So, if you are among those who have fallen, and those who fall are many, know that it's not the end. You're still alive. You still have a chance. You're still in a better position than many other people who fell off and just kept falling. They didn't turn around. They didn't try to get back. At least you have made something of an effort. So don't give up. Don't. Never give up. As long as what you're trying to do is good, it's worth never giving up. The Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, in order to stress to us how little things can earn us great rewards if we're consistent, he said in a hadith narrated to us by Umm Habiba that the Prophet ﷺ had said, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يُصَلِّي لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى كُلَّ يَوْمٍ إِثْنَتَيْ عَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةً There is no servant of Allah who prays every day. So this is the consistency. Prays every day. Twelve units of prayer. Tatawan, Voluntary prayer. غير الفريضة Not from the obligatory prayers. إِلَّا بَنَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Except that Allah will build a house in paradise for him or her. So everyone who prays 12 voluntary sunnah prayers, these are before and after the obligatory prayers, as the Prophet ﷺ recommended, anyone who does that consistently, kulayom, every day, Allah promises to build them a house in paradise. So simple, such a simple act with such a great reward. But the key is consistency. Kulayom. Every day. So, brothers and sisters, as we said in the very beginning, our motto should be never give up. As long as what you're doing is good, never give it up. Strive to hold on. If you have given up good things in the past, you can bring them back to life again. But do it gradually. Don't go to extremes. Find that modern, moderate middle path. Take on things step by step and build brick by brick. And establish practice of additional righteous deeds above and beyond the obligatory. Never give up. So this was, as I said in the beginning, a talk, an advice for those students who are studying in the Islamic Online University. But it is students studying in anything. It's not just Islamic Online University, it's any university or any institution. You're doing Tajweed. You're learning Arabic, whatever. Any of these efforts to gain knowledge, knowledge which is going to be beneficial to you in both this life and the next, then you have to have that never give up attitude. That should be your basic motto. Never give it up. Because when you do, you have, in fact, been checkmated by Satan. That's exactly what he was setting out to do. 
and you are among the fallen, the wounded, the dead, the destroyed. So, brothers and sisters, look into your personal lives. Look for those things that you used to do, that you chose to do at one point, you thought was good. Fasting Mondays and Thursdays. And start again. Start with Monday. Maybe don't start with both, but just start with Monday. Establish Monday. Once Monday is in place, your whole family is doing it. You know, you get your neighbors, get your friends. Break fast together. Make it something which will help you to be consistent with it, you know. Break the fast at different people's homes. Everybody gets a turn, you know. Or to encourage everybody, bring them all to your home. You know, that's your commitment for sure. You know, you're not going to miss fasting the day when you know everybody's coming to your house. So if you particularly want to make sure you're the one that's on it, then have them in, come to your home and break that fast together. Re-establish it in your life. The sadaqah that you used to give. You started at one point and then you got lazy, you got lax, other considerations came up and you didn't keep it up. Whether it was a charitable donation you were given to an orphan somewhere, for somebody to be able to get schooling, digging wells in the third world, whatever. That righteous deed that you used to do, you no longer do. Life got overwhelming as you saw it, although there's nothing overwhelming. It may be a lot, but Allah doesn't put you in a position where you are overwhelmed. You put yourself in a position where you're overwhelmed. Ultimately, when you overdo it, you go to extremes, etc. So, try to pick up some of those lost deeds. Tahajjud at night. The additional prayers, voluntary prayers, before and after your obligatory prayers. Try to revive these. Bring them back into your life and into the lives of those around you. Because the more people who do it along with you, the easier it is for you to do it. When you're doing it all by yourself, of course, it's a much greater challenge. It's much greater. But now, if you get your family to do it, you have friends, you get your friends to do it along with you, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to remain consistent. We as human beings, we need help and support from others. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu had said, Nikah Nisfuddin, marriage is half of the religion. That's because of the help factor. That the wife is supposed to help the husband, husband is supposed to help the wife. That's why he said it should be based on the deen. Because if it's based on the deen, then you're helping each other to worship Allah. But if it's not based on the deen, then it's not half. It's just a relationship. A relationship which is not helping you get to paradise. It may be one taking you to hell. So, as I said, never give up. As long as what you're doing is what is pleasing to Allah, hold on to it. Continue to do it. We never know when this life will end. We don't know the future. We don't think, we don't try to think, we'll pass it on. Later on, I'll do it. Later. Next week, next month, next year. Soon. No. Do it now. Start it now. Because no one knows what Allah has destined for tomorrow. So, 
With that, my brothers and sisters, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this Ustream presentation, which is fundamentally an IOU, Islamic Online University presentation. And for those of you that don't know about the Islamic Online University, Google it and go to the website and find out about it. There are free courses here, free courses, diploma courses, with no requirements. You can join as you wish, without any prerequisites, etc., and just get the knowledge. There are over 100,000 students around the world who are registered and engaged in this course in one way or another. We also have a BA in Islamic Studies, online, in English medium, with Arabic as a subject, which you have to take, and that has a cost to it, but it is a minimum cost. If you're from West Africa or East Africa, the poorer nations, it's only $40. If you're from the richer nations, US, UK, Canada, it's $120 per semester, not per course. So either your degree is uh, $320 for a BA degree and our degrees are accredited. We have accreditation from Somalia, Mogadishu, UN recognized, meaning that one who gets a degree with us should be able, if he wants to do a master's or PhD in any university in the world, he has that opportunity to do so, to join it. Of course, universities can accept or not accept if they wish, but we are amongst the globally accredited universities. For $320, or at most, it's $960. That's for, thir for the first world countries. $960, you know, that's like, a pittance, it's a drop in a, an ocean for what courses normally involve. And we are a Sharia-based uh, program. Our program, our syllabus, curriculum is Sharia-based, but we have critical modern subjects, acquired knowledge subjects, which are complementary that go along with it, whether in psychology, in education, in economics, in business administration, in IT, you name it, we have included a number of other courses and continue to include other courses which we require our students to take that will round out their knowledge and make them effective in applying that knowledge in different circumstances when they graduate. We have minors. If one, one wants to go into teaching, we have the equivalent of a certificate in education, certificate in economics, Islamic economics, in business administration, etc. So this opportunity of the Islamic Online University is one which is uniquely available to the world today. We have the most diverse student body of any university in the world. We're the only university in the world that can claim we have students from every single country on the face of this planet. And all of that was achieved within five years time because of the miracle of the internet and the desire of Muslims to gain knowledge and the spread of Muslims to virtually every country on the planet. So we have students from everywhere. Join this global community, share with us this good and worship Allah along with us, seeking knowledge. The compulsory, the required commitment which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam placed firmly on our shoulders. I pray that Allah help each and every one of us succeed in this 
succeed in finding our way onto this path, the path of seeking knowledge, and of holding on firmly to it, being consistent, never giving up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.